Okay, we're getting real close to the end here. The last thing that we're going to do in the complete disassembly of this engine is to remove the piston from the crankshaft. Inside of the little hole here, there's a little retainer clip that's inside. And there are, as you can see on the side of the piston, there's two grooves cut in here all the way across, which makes it fairly easy to get these little retainer clips out. What we're going to do is grab a pair of needle nose pliers or you can also use an awl if you would like. What we're going to do is we're going to reach into the two little grooves and put our pliers on each side of the little retaining clip and gently squeeze and it's going to come out and shoot across the room just like that. So we always do suggest that when you are removing the pins that you do have additional clips available. Once that clip is removed, and your very good friends find them on the floor for you, thank you, Ted. <laughs> I knew I invited him over for a reason. If nothing else, he's proved his worth today. So what we're going to do at this point is turn this around, and we're going to use a little flathead screwdriver or something, and go ahead and push the piston pin out, the wrist pin just like so and it's going to go ahead and come out the other side and at a certain point you can go ahead and grab it and take it out be careful at this point because there are parts inside that can fall off so we're going to go ahead and set the wrist pin down I'm going to hold my hand down underneath the piston and go ahead and remove the piston just like so there should be three parts inside of here. There should be two small little end caps like this that fit over the bearing. One on each side of the bearing. This one falls off. One on each side of the bearing. I'm going to set those down and then we're going to go ahead and remove the roller bearing just like so. Now we've completely disassembled the engine so that you have an idea of what all's involved and you don't have to necessarily tear down your entire engine however we've just done that so you know what it's all about stay tuned and our next set of tutorials is going to be the reassembly of your engine welcome back to the fast eddy engine teardown and rebuild tutorial uh, i'm ted some of you know me already i'm the owner of dark soul racing i'm going to help out here doing the reassembly portion of this video so to get started we are going to do some basic cleaning and get our supplies in order to reassemble this motor all right well at this point we need to get our supplies ready to do the rebuild uh, there's some obvious things we're going to need. First off, what we're going to need are some new uh, crank seals or oil seals. So we've got those. We will need a whole new gasket set. So just new gaskets, intake, case, uh, exhaust, so on. Obviously, we're going to need some new crank seals. We've decided on the rebuild to use some of the Team Fast Eddy ceramic case bearings. You will also need some carb cleaner or some good electronics cleaner to do the cleaning with. So we have all our items together and it is time to get this all back together. Alrighty, well we've got all our supplies together so the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of cleaning. We're going to take our case halves and we're going to peel the old gaskets off. Just walk around. Usually they'll come right off. Sometimes they'll be sticky. You might need a razor blade and have to do a little scraping. If you do do that, just make sure that you don't gouge the cases in any way. Once the gaskets are off, we're just going to use our carb cleaner. We're just going to blast everything really good. Get all that oil and crud out. Be liberal with it. Don't be shy. Get inside and out. Do a really good clean. Set those aside, let them dry off. With carb cleaner, they'll dry really quickly. Both halves of the case. If it's been a long time between builds, you may need to get a toothbrush or some kind of a, a utility brush 
to really get in there and dig all the, the ground in or the burned in stuff off. This motor is actually not too bad so it's just coming off with the spray. So there's our case halves ready to go. Alright, now that our cases are all nice and clean and we've uh, taken them out back and blown them off with some pressurized air, it's time for the final assembly of everything. So what we need to do now is insert the oil seals or crank seals and the crank bearings of course. So let's get these guys out of the way and prepare to do that. One of the things we're going to need, at least in our case, is we're going to use a small arbor press to press our bearings back in. There's a couple different ways that you can reinsert the case bearings. One is by heat where we recommend that you take your cases, throw them in a small like a toaster oven or even the big oven, and warm them up to about 250 to 300 degrees for about 10 or 15 minutes. Generally speaking at that point the bearings will drop right in. If it doesn't you can also freeze the bearings, put them in the freezer for a few hours, warm up the cases and they'll usually go right together. For time purposes here, we're going to use an arbor press, which if you do it correctly and take your time, is just as effective and you won't damage anything. Alright, so let's get these bearings pressed in now. So get our new Fast Eddy bearings. We'll get these out of the package. And get our arbor press over here. Okay, at this point we are going to install our first bearing in the small side of the crankcase. What we're going to do is we're going to push that bearing down until it just makes contact with the C-clip. So we're going to put the bearing in, try and get it started more or less as even as possible. We'll put it into our arbor press. And again, you want to make sure that you're pressing on the outsides of the races here. You don't want to be pressing on the insides of the races. And if it's going in straight, it should just slide right in nice and smooth like ours just did. And you'll feel it bottom out. At that point, don't force it. You want to let it off, inspect it from the backside, and sure enough, we're just right up to the clip. Alrighty, so we are going to now install the other bearing into the other case half. What we need to do on this one is we want to support it. We don't want to be pressing on the, uh, the outside ring here because we don't want to potentially damage this when we press the bearing in. So we just got this old junky uh, gas cap that's perfect spacer. We're going to use that, set it down there, get our other bearing, place it in just like we did on the other side. You want to make sure it's as flat as possible when we start. Line it all up, bring our press down. Again, make sure we're on the outer race. And if it's in there, which it is, it'll slide right in nice and smooth without too much pressure until you feel it stop. And that's it. Pull it out and inspect and sure enough we're in there. Spins nice and free still, so we're good to go.